Dr. Shinayan, you've been just addressing this august meeting here at the American Association for Cancer Research on a, a new idea, really. It's gene rearrangements rather than gene mutations being center stage, so to speak, in, in cancer formation. Can you tell me what it was you were, you were presenting here? Yes, uh, we discovered that a percentage of uh, patients with uh, metastatic prostate cancer uh, harbor this uh, gene fusion or rearrangement in this uh, pretty well-known cancer gene called KRAS, which uh, previously was thought to be associated with point mutations, but in our particular study, uh, it suggests that uh, gene fusions or rearrangements are involved. What is the difference between a gene fusion or rearrangement mm -hmm. as compared with a mutation? So a, uh, a um, mutation is essentially where you change the base coding, uh, while um, a gene fusion is when you actually uh, rearrange parts of the genome, so different genes come together which shouldn't be together. And what kind of effect would that have, theoretically? Uh, I think the, the greatest example of that is the BCR-ABLE gene fusion, which many people know for, uh, which is associated with chronic myeloid leukemia. That's the driving gene fusion for that particular uh, disease. Um, so in that particular case, that is the cancer-causing or oncogenic gene. So that is what we believe we've identified in prostate cancer as well, a cancer-causing gene fusion like BCR-ABLE in chronic myeloid leukemia. And that's in the UBE2L3 gene? It's the UBE2L3 gene fused to KRAS. So two different genes which are in different parts of the human genome coming together creating this chimeric gene. So it's an alternative mechanism for activating KRAS, making it into a cancer-forming gene? Right. It's a different mechanism than what's been classically associated with KRAS base substitution, for example, in pancreatic cancer lung cancer and colon cancer, but in prostate cancer, we basically identify this gene rearrangement event as causing uh, activation of the KRAS uh, oncogene. What might it tell you that's new about prostate cancer? Um, it suggests that um, prostate cancers um, have different biological behavior that might be associated with the different types of molecular lesions that cause them. So the fusions that we identified in this particular study with KRAS suggest that that particular fusion might be a more aggressive form of prostate cancer because we identified them um, exclusively in metastatic prostate cancer. So you've got a, a subgroup of patients who might get a different treatment. Uh, exactly. They might get a different treatment and be associated with a different prog uh, prognosis, so potentially a more aggressive treatment. Or uh, if uh, we can find ways of blocking the KRAS pathway, they might be amenable to KRAS uh, based uh, drug treatments. Of course, there are dilemmas in treating prostate cancer mm -hmm. because it can be very aggressive. It can, on the other hand, be very benign. Right. And you could easily do more harm than good. Could this help? Uh, yes, I think that that's one of our thoughts is, is that in the future we will be able to molecularly subtype prostate cancer patients, identify those that have the more aggressive uh, molecular alterations like these gene fusions of KRAS and those that have more indolent mutations that might not require treatment. So have you got a handle on prognosis and also prediction of, of how treatments will work, do you think? Uh, I would say that th these are early days of sequencing um, the prostate cancer genome, so we're still learning about what all of the different players are and the types of mutations that patients get, but I think we're just understanding the roadmap, so in the future I think we'll be able to link that with, with therapies. How big a cause of a cancer could rearrangements be as compared with mutations, do you think? Uh, I would say in prostate cancer, it is a major cause of, of prostate cancer, probably on the order of 60 to 70 percent, if not all of prostate cancer, we believe is actually a rearrangement-based disease because very few um, uh, point mutations, say, have really been uh, identified as being driving mutations in prostate cancer. That may be different for other uh, common solid tumors, but certainly for prostate cancer, as well as hematologic malignancies and rare soft tissue tumors, they have been defined as rearrangement-based disease, diseases. Does this new understanding help doctors right now, do you think, in any way? Um, I would say that it does not necessarily help doctors right now today, but in the future, the prediction is that, that these patients, if they were typed, would be predicted to have a more aggressive form of prostate cancer, so theoretically being treated differently. And could that subtyping be done reasonably efficiently in the, in the, in the uh, hospital clinic? I believe in the next uh, five to ten years we should have tests that should much more easily 
detect these mutations. Well, you've just published on this uh, mm -hmm. very exciting new discovery. Um, what's the take-home message? What's the, what's the bottom line? How would you summarize this? Uh, I would say that there is a uh, rare subset of prostate cancers that are potentially caused by rearrangements of KRAS, uh, and those prostate cancer patients likely have a more uh, aggressive course. But this is, again, early days. Dr. Arul Shinaim, thank you very much for joining us here on eCancer TV. Thank you very much.